Hello agents and welcome to another Division 2 video. Two days ago we have been able to see some new details about the Division 2 at the PAX West 2018 game show event which has happened in the Seattle, United States of America. In this video I will show you parts of the Ubisoft stream where you can see a new demo, new gameplay, the whole Division 2 map of the Washington DC and a lot of other juicy details about the new Division 2 game. The gameplay we are about to see is coming straight from the demo that is currently playable at the event. At the beginning of the demo you can see the in-game gear menu, character and the vast map of the Washington DC which is 20% larger than the New York City map in the original Division game. What we are watching right now is the latest Division 2 trailer which you may be already seen but the original audio is cut off because of some copyright issues. Be sure to check this trailer in the original version. With that said we will jump right into the new footage and uh, if you like the video drop a like, comment or subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Enjoy in the rest of the video. So. This is, uh, this is the start of the demo that players can play uh, on the show floor. So you can kind of see here, you know, right away, summer, very different kind of environment. I'm, you know, you can almost feel the heat. And if I jump into my inventory, you can start seeing some of the changes we've made to the, that nitty gritty part of the RPG. And the biggest change right off the bat is the specialization weapon, right? Um, when you uh, get- Hold on, I just want to stop you right there. Where we're still talking a little bit more about DC, showing off uh, some of the deep, more oh, detailed environments. Um, and you know, as you can see here from the stream, you guys put in so much care oh my and depth into this world. Um, I think it's one thing to build DC, it's a whole other thing to ruin it in a way, right? Yeah, well, the whole world is, is made in layers, right? Like we start with that base uh, DC, that one-to-one -one we were talking about, but then you're layering on top of that the story, right? And these, these really add on top of your other build that you're already creating to kind of just specialize you a little bit more, create interesting group synergies, uh, and also just, if you're a solo player, it lets you play the way you want to play. Yeah. Keep customizing. So, I mean, you mentioned that end game first philosophy. Uh, was that really something you took away from the Division One of giving players m you know, a lot of things to do even after they finish the main campaign? Oh yeah, I think if you see the type of stuff we continue to add, right, through year one and year two, there were tons of different game modes, there were world expansions, there were Dark Zone expansions, all these things. And it's because the players who play this game are very passionate and they consume content, man. And you just always want to give them more stuff to play. It's, yeah. It's awesome. Absolutely. So yeah, we have the sharpshooter specialization up right now. Um, yeah, let's look in uh, a little bit in depth in some of this gear. Yeah, so you, know, you can also see here that your normal gear that you're um, equipping, your six major slots, have brands associated with them now. Um, and that adds so much to the game because on top of you know, trying to get a really good set of knee pads, you're trying to combine brands together uh, in interesting ways as well. And it's just, it, I really think the, just the core loot game is gonna be super interesting in this one and in, in a real evolution. Yeah, that's always what hooked me on the first division. Yeah. Uh, you can also see some of the new skills uh, in play here, like um, there's a support drone that you can actually you know, pop out and it follows you around the battlefield. Um, and it makes, it, you just have an evolved sense of the shade tech from the first game. It feels like heightened, it's really cool. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. And so, you know, as you mentioned, the sharpshooter comes with the, uh, the sniper rifle. That's his signature, or yeah. his or her signature weapon. Um, what other specializations are there? Yeah, so there's a demolitionist um, and they have a rocket launcher. And then there's also specialization that gives you a crossbow with an exploding tip arrow, which is, uh, you know, the, the fantasy about. of it is pretty, pretty amazing. But the weapon is just kind of like the centerpiece of the specialization. Uh, just picking your specialization kind of adds to your toolbox. So it really opens up a whole new progression path, even past getting the weapon, which is, you know, that's the front and center thing, but there's a lot of interesting progression inside of the system. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's jump into the map a little bit and take cool. a look at DC. Yeah, so you can see here um, how big the map is compared to New York. So we're about 20% larger than the map we shipped within New York, which was, was already pretty massive. Um, the E3 demo uh, that people are playing kind of, you know, takes place just in this one little section. 
And as you start pulling back the map from there, um, you can really see how much variety we're going to get out of this. Even at this very high level, you can see the, the difference between the really wide open spaces um, and start seeing all those different environments. Um, so you can see, you know, up in Georgetown, uh, it's a very suburban feel. Um, and versus, you know, down here where most of the monuments are, like the Capitol that you can see in the background of the, uh, of the demo. Yeah, and you know, as you said, it's completely open around the Capitol. That's something you, we didn't see a whole lot of. In the no, absolutely, one. absolutely, right? There's a lot of uh, those tall skyscrapers kind of create some corridors for you, and it's really refreshing to be able to see some one-story buildings and mm -hmm. some just the different feel that that creates. And so how does that, how does that translate to gameplay? You know, I think the biggest thing is that you feel like you can attack uh, encounters from so many more angles than last time, right? Like, um, you know, in, in the demo you start and you're coming in from one angle, but that's an open world activity. So you can imagine you're leaving the Capitol building, you come from the other side, that plays out so differently. Things feel more open because you have more options of how you want to engage the fights. Yeah, and so, I mean, I think that that variability is extremely obvious. When we jump into the demo, we'll see it in a little bit. But when you're making all these different, you know, neighborhoods, like you said, there were there were sort of two different ones in the Division One. Yeah. Now there's there's many many more. Um, how how do you go about connecting those? How do you make them all feel part of the same world? Well, the cool thing is, you know, it's all in the city, right? So uh, the city planner kind of did a lot of this for us, and when we bring that in. The fact that we have a nature biome now, right? We have a nature environment that feels totally natural and is, is, that creates such a different type of gameplay, taking cover on trees, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's just something, um, something that really changes the game at a core level. Um, and it's, as you flow between these different environments, you really feel like you're progressing through the city and exploring, mm -hmm. you know? I want people, and we all want people who kind of explore this map to be able to go into DC and kind of have the lay of the land. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, one of the things that DC is it's one of the most recognizable cities in this country, obviously, yeah. uh, mostly because of its monuments, right? Um, how many of those did you get to put into this game? So, you know, the monuments are a huge deal in DC, right? Like, there's iconic things that we all see so much in pictures and on, in movies and all these stuff that if you've even never been to DC, you kind of have an idea of how special, like, you know, the White House is, or the National, Mon uh, the Capitol Building, and all these things. Um, so you know, a lot of them are in there, and you can see them on the map here. You know, like we have, um, like a little north here. You know, the White House. Yeah. There's things for Washington you to explore, Monument. find Washington Monument. Um, there, are, you will be able to explore the map and and find those things because you know it's the one-to-one -one recreation, and yeah. we want you to really feel like you're in DC. Yeah. And you know, I think if we, we jump back out of this Lincoln uh, Memorial. Map, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, obviously Lincoln Jefferson, Roosevelt Island. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Roosevelt Island really like shows off that natural biome we were talking about. Yeah, totally. And, and I mean and then even the Air and Space Museum. We're here, we're looking oh, yeah. at another museum. Um, and I just I love the the amount of realism that it feels like like you guys put into this, the believability that this is what DC might look like if something like this happened. Yeah, you know, we wanted to make it. We wanted to make it feel real. We wanted to make it feel like seven months had passed. We wanted you to feel the heat uh, of what that city is like in summer when it started to flood and it's a little nasty, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, in the background here, you can see the Gallery of Modern Art. And it's those types of things that you know, like the Air and Space Museum, right? Like exploring the city and really getting to see these monuments up close and personal, you know, in a way that you would never be able to do in reality. Yeah. What I think shows really well here and what, again, the Division One did such a good job of is that environmental storytelling, that oh you my, walk yeah. through an area, a neighborhood, and find out what happened, right? right? We could see here what exhibition was showing at the Gallery of Modern Art. Even. You know, one really interesting thing is that, you know, this, the outbreak happened here at Christmas time as well. So we're in the summer, but you still see those remnants of Christmas. Um, like famous Christmas trees that are really up in DC at that time of year are still there, but they're, they're dead and their ornaments are hanging on them, you know? And you get that sense of no one ever cleaned this up mm -hmm. and time passed and nature came out yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, it's bad enough for Paul leaving your Christmas tree up at New Year's, let alone <laughs> yeah. well into summer. 
Um, but yeah, that's, that's a really great point that, yeah, this, the outbreak hits at all at the same time. Um, what happens when it's seven, you know, six months down the line? Um, and you know, how do you deal with that? True Suns have this area locked down, but if you can capture their control point, you'll be clearing the way for the settlement to take it over. So this is, you know, the area we just sort of took a look at, uh, but what's going on in this demo? Well, the cool thing about this demo is, you know, this is not some scripted mission. It's not a side mission. It's not a main mission. This is just the open world. This is the living world that we're creating. So the players are just exploring the living world right now, and they come upon a control point. And that's um, one of these things I was talking about, where that true, um, excuse me, the True Sons faction have moved in there to try to lock it down. And if you get in there, you can call civilians to help you and try to take it back. And if you hold that, you're getting resources for you know, the civilians, you're helping them out. And these types of things can just occur throughout the living world, right? They're different every time you play, and we really want to increase the replayability of even this aspect of the game. Yeah, um, and so we're looking here at a four-person squad, right? Sort of yeah. switching between angles. Um, what, you know, Walk us through a bit of what these players are doing, what, what each specialization might be. Yeah, so I think like the most noticeable thing right off the bat is they're using cover a lot. And that's uh, a core pillar of what we're trying to do is, you know, we want to really, um, really put an emphasis on the, the core shooter feel, right? So the lethality is you really feel it. You want to fight from cover. It feels very tactical. And so you'll see them using a lot of very smart cover and getting kind of flank, flushed out of that cover throughout the demo, right? And having to, to kind of um, react on the fly as uh, to what the AI are doing. In terms of their, their skills, I love the deer. That's oh, like God, one of my I favorite. I love the deer. Yeah. I made the mistake of shooting the deer oh, in my no. demo just oh. to see if I could, and it, I felt so guilty. It broke so, your heart. It did. It did. People, don't shoot deers. Yeah. Don't, don't do it, even in games. <laughs> um, but anyway, if we look at their actual, actual loadouts, right? We can see here, um, deploying, deploying a skill, they've thrown, they've thrown this hive out. And you can see this is one of the new skills that kind of shoots out these little micro drones that seek out targets. Um, kind of, once again, just like a, a new toolbox for you to play with. Here we're using um, another one of the new skills that lets you throw out this uh, kind of explosive um, explosive mist into the air, and when bullets penetrate inside of it, it lights on fire. Oh, so God. there's clouds of fire. Clouds of fire, right? And you can imagine, you could lay down this cloud of fire, throw the hive in there, the hive lets off the chain reaction of fire throughout the battlefield. We're trying to create a lot of interesting synergies between what players can actually build. Yeah. And I think, you know, we started off in sort of a, a enclosed interior space, and now we see you know, the, the uh, Capitol building in the background, it's a yeah. much more open space like you were talking about than we'd ever seen before. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think um, even that even that first building we went through, you could have come in through the second story or the bottom and attacked from all these different angles. And it, and it feels like you have options, but then you get into an environment like this and, you know, you could completely 360 flank around this space. There's tons of different tactical positions. Um, and I, I really think it's going to add to the replayability of the game. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, and you're totally right. You know, just even seeing here trees and, and grass and greenery um, in, you know, in the hot DC summer is a, feels like a total change of pace for the division. That guy just got some, uh, some sick loot out of that supply drop that was stuck up in the tree. We're trying to hide a lot of stuff like that around the space, which is cool. Yeah, so I mean, you're, the environments are worth exploring, too. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> yeah, you want to you wanna pay attention and look around. Not only be pretty, but yeah, <laughs> they got loot. That's what this is really about. Just give me more loot. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so here you can see, you know, the control point is up. The true suns have captured it. When you go in, you could totally try to take this control point back on your own, or you could call in nearby allies. Um, so you shoot off a flare, and that actually calls civilians to come and support you and try to take this back, and then they'll hold it. Um, and they're li really out there, and they really have to travel to this space, and, and it's all part of this living world simulation. That's awesome to hear. Yeah. So, I mean, we're looking at a four-player team right now, yeah. but of course you can play this all by yourself. So if yeah. you need a little support, yeah, absolutely. shoot that flare up, right? You got Yeah, them. and you can, you, know, you can kind of get into position, shoot off the flare, see them approaching, wait to attack until they're there, and kind of really plan out your attack uh, in a more strategic way. Yeah, that's awesome. So here, we're, they're fighting the True Sons. Um, what, what's important about this point? Why is it a control point? 
So each of the control points, um, there's lots of them littered all around the environment, um, but they're, they're places that would have some sort of resource that, that these factions and these settlements need. Um, so it might be, you know, water supplies or food or, you know, it, there's varying things that they go after. Um, but yeah, each environment has something that these factions want out of it. And this one on top of it is, you know, an amazing crashed Air Force One, which kind of does add to the, uh, the spectacle. Oh yeah, <laughs> certainly. Um, what I think we're seeing, what's cool that we're seeing here too. Yeah, you'll see the task force has just arrived from when he kicked it in. Sorry to. No, 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 no absolutely. But uh, you, we get all these different perspectives and you see how different you can play. You oh yeah. You right up there in the middle with a shotgun, you, you know. Yeah, like this person just pulled out their specialized weapon, which is the grenade launcher. And you actually have to collect special ammo for that. So you'll be collecting special ammo for your weapon as you play and, you know, and then using it at really the, the right moment, right? So it's these, these big explosions of power uh, that are super impactful on the battlefield. Yeah, we, we just saw the drone there as well. Yeah, this person just pulled out their 50 cal sniper rifle. We wanted to have a different season for players to run around in. You know, we've, we've all ran around the snow a lot. Yeah. Let's get in there and, and kind of get a new environment. We wanted to progress the story. There was just a lot to be gained from kind of continuing the timeline and, and making a continuing story. Yeah, absolutely. And you're, you know, you're not fresh anymore. Yeah. You're a little bit seasoned. Exactly. You sweltering DC heat on you. Yeah, it's a yeah. very, very different feel uh, for players who played the first game. Yeah, absolutely. And so I want to talk a little bit about DC. Too. Yeah. Um, what was the decision behind going to Washington, DC? You know, there were, you know, in the very beginning, right, there were lots of cities looked at. Um, you know, they announced a little bit ago, we at one point were looking at Seattle, right? Right where we are right now. Um, but when we really kind of broke it down, DC was kind of an obvious choice. You know, one of our goals is to make a true kind of one-to-one -one recreation of the city. And we did that in New York. Um, but we kind of came out of that with two big environments, two major environment types, right? We had the residential and we had the more business uh, centers. Inside DC, still doing that one-to-one, -one, we get six different environments. So what that adds to gameplay, what that adds to just your experience of exploring the world is so huge. And then adding on top of that, just what DC is and means, right? It's the center of power uh, you know, for, for the United States. So there's just a lot to, uh, to milk out of that environment. Yeah, I think if you immediately look at it, it's very obvious this isn't New York in the middle of winter, no. uh, right? I think the thing that stands out most when I look at DC is really how open it is, how very oh, yeah. it is, right? Yeah, exactly, and you know, each section of the city kind of has its own gameplay feel. You know, in the, in the demo that people are getting to play here, that's a really wide open environment, probably more open than anything from the first game. Um, and then you contrast that with going into some of these, you know, more suburban areas and you get a lot of gameplay variety. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you mentioned, you know, trying to build it at that one-to-one -one scale. Was it, was it important for you that if you know DC, you'll know this game? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, the amount of time we spend looking at maps, is immense, but there's also tools that we've been adding to the engine so that it's one-to-one -one down to street signs, um, park benches. Um, it's all of that, you know, satellite data that's being like pumped into the game to, to make it a true one-to-one -one recreation.